코로나 때문에 가족을 잃은 여러분들에게 진심으로 죄송하지만 저처럼 코로나 19 검사 양성 판정을 받은 압도적인 다수의 사람들은 회복된 게 사실입니다. But the test I'm talking about, if you fail, its repercussion will last for this life and beyond. Second Corinthians 13:5. Hey, Corinthians. Examine yourself whether you are in the faith. Touch yourself. Don't you realize that Christ is in you? Unless you fail the test. He is now openly questioning their salvation. Why? Because they were not displaying any sign of change. But I thought we would say by His grace, through faith, not by works, so no one can boast. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. So that's a very easy question to respond to, right? But then you got to go to James chapter 2. James chapter 2 is very, very disturbing to those who think that we're saved by faith alone. But then even Luther, the father of Protestant Reformation, said this. We are saved by faith alone, but faith that is not alone. You say you believe, but there is no fruit then Paul is now questioning openly, uh, examine yourself whether you are in the faith. We are saved by faith alone, but not by faith that is alone. James 2.19, James said, so you impressed you have faith? I have faith. So, so the demons, and they have a right kind of intellectual faith because they believe in God, they go, say, shut up. That's better than a lot of us who say, God, my friend, my buddy. Secondarily so, he needs to be feared. No, demons got the right version of God. God, shut up. But the writer of James was so sure that that faith is not a saving faith. You know why? Because demons thousands of years ago were stealing, robbing, and killing. And they still do the same thing despite that faith, which means that faith doesn't change. That's a false faith. That's how you know whether that faith is safe or not. COVID test? Oh, it's important. Your pastor almost died. But he survived. This test? You continue to fail and you die? So, where would you go when you fail the test? Hell. Isn't that really weird? Like, this is church. We don't talk about hell. It's a subject matter that if you talk too much, it's no good. And yet we don't talk at all in the church. We become too sophisticated. I'm going to tell you today that gospel that omits hell doesn't save. How so? Bernie Madoff, terrible investor. Larry Nasser, terrible doctor. Giselle Maxwell, terrible woman and socialite. They're terrible people. They've done terrible things to hurt people. So, would you be happy if the judge said, All right, Maxwell, all right, Nasser, all right, Bernie Madoff, for all you did, three months suspended sentence. Justice fulfilled or not fulfilled? Justice not fulfilled. Cost of sin, Romans 6.23. The wage of sin is death. Separation from God. When you're separated, your ultimate destination is 2 Thessalonians 1, 8, 9. Shut off from the presence of God and placed in eternal destruction. Hell. That's where you end. And Jesus died and he paid the price of hell for us. It wasn't Three months suspended sentence. He was eternal separation from the presence of God. And he paid that. And he turns around and says, when you believe what I did, my work gets applied to you. And it is as you have never sinned. Because I pay for the penalty of that sin. Social justice? Wonderful. But first, we have to meet the justice of God. Romans 8, 4. So that the requirement of the law may be met in us. That requirement is death. Separation from God. Hell. Somebody got to pay for this. Jesus paid for that. When you believe him, 
You have fulfilled the requirement of the law. You are atoned for. You are redeemed. You are forgiven. Eternal life granted as a free gift. That's the gospel. Les digo que así es también en el cielo. Habrá más alegría por un solo pecador que se arrepienta por un 99 justos que lo necesitan arrepentirse. Hablando no un pastor humano, sino pastor Cristo. Al encontrar la una que fue perdida, está tan gozoso. Eh.